So I've been told that I need to get a grip. Now what I mean by get a grip is that I am currently taking occupational therapy for my hands. And my therapist suggested that I try out a few different comfort grips since I am an illustrator and that is what I do all day, every day, Pinky. So I've probably talked about grips a few times here on the channel. I do use grips, but I'm not as attentive to making sure every brush has a grip, every pencil has a grip, every everything that I'm like tightly death gripping has a grip on it. So I might've gone a little bit overboard but the thing about grips is it takes using them to know what works for you. So I bought a bunch of them. Some of them I tried while in PT and some of them that looked quite promising and might work on some unusual things that I need to be able to get a grip on. My inspiration behind sharing all this is I posted on threads asking if anybody else had hand health issues and if they had any recommendations for grips. And it was basically met with no, no suggestions. We'd love to hear what you come up with, which is uh, definitely the blind leading the blind here. So I'm just going to do my best. I am not a professional in that sense, but I am a professional artist and illustrator with hand health issues. I do have Sjogren's and I have had arthritis and arthralgia in my hands, arthritis first and then arthralgia in my hands since I was about 12 years old. That went unaddressed. I also have a really messed up apparently grip. I put a lot of pressure here and my therapist and I are working on that. So we have some of these foam grip tubes. I was hoping that these might work with my watercolor brushes, especially since some of them get really, really thin and narrow, kind of too small for standard pencil grips. Now my concern with this is I do wash them, I do dip them in water, and I don't want them soaking up a bunch of water. So that's kind of a concern. We have grip tape which this may go on some of my brushes as well. Oh, I also should point out that Joseph found these like silicone grips, I'll put a photo of them here, to go on door handles. And those have been, for someone with Sjogren's, those have been such a huge help because I have a really hard time getting enough friction between my hand and the nickel doorknob to actually turn it. So it actually requires more grip strength. And on days when my arthralgia arthritis is really acting up, those silicone grips are a little bit cushy. They have knobs on them and they're just so much easier. I really didn't think they would make that much of a difference and they really do. So if you struggle to open the doorknobs in your house, that could be a good way to go. And honestly, this kind of stuff, I had it dismissed by multiple doctors for decades of my life. So if that can happen to me, Maybe that's happening to you. Maybe we have that in common. So I have the foam grip tubes. I have a few different types of grips because I'm gonna try to put these things on everything I can. And I'm not gonna show all of that here. I may talk about it though. So we have like these kind of squishy triangular grips. These are more about friction than they are about cushy. We have these Dollar Tree jelly grips. I already use these, these go on stuff. We have these kind of dumb looking little dolphin grips that look like they're made of that same soft jelly. Oh, some, some loving person taped this to keep it shut because it's so poorly packaged, but now I'm having an accessibility issue with this. Love it. Hey, when you're packaging stuff, please do, especially accessibility aids, Please don't package it in such a way that your user base, your customer can't get into it. Please. They're ridiculous. This is why I complain about those dumb tape dots. And people are like, well, you could just cut them, Becca. Yeah, <laughs> you see how this is going. So well. <sighs> Seriously. 
Why, why is the cheap tape, like the tape that will not give up the ghost? Okay. Ooh, they smell like, like plastic. So we've got these and they kind of have like the indent for where your finger is going to go. Now, a lot of, a lot of the grip aids that are sold are meant for and marketed to parents. Of, well, they're meant for children and they're marketed to parents and teachers. And um, anyone of any age can need a grip aid. It isn't just for young children. Ooh, oh, I kind of like these. Some of these, my stylus is like a real hot pressure point zone that I really want to solve. These are nice because they're longer. And another problem is I tend to like choke up. So I've been trying to do some work on my own of like adjusting my grip, moving it further back, not needing to be a control freak, that sort of thing. Also got this because one of the reasons my stylus, this is disgustingly sticky. Somebody spilled something on this. I love that for me. Um, one of the, ugh, what, sorry, having an ADHD moment, having a sensory issue moment. Uh, one of the reasons my current stylus for my Surface Book doesn't have any kind of a cush grip on it is because it needs to magnet to the side of my laptop or I will lose it. My older stylus that has given up the ghost had a clip on it so I could kind of clip it to the Surface Pro, the tablet style one, so it could have a grip on it. But some very intelligent person who did lots of design research decided to make both the Microsoft stylus and the Apple Pencil without a built-in comfort grip because super smart and definitely know that artists don't spend eight plus hours straight drawing. Anyway, this is a stylus tether to tether it to my laptop. So even if it has a grip, I won't lose it. Trying to work with the ADHD and the grip issues. These and these, oh, ooh, these have these, ooh. Whole new world. Yes, okay, awesome. So these, yes, I like these. These on spiral. So for bigger things like this, ha, huh? all right, I kind of like that. And then you got to position it correctly, but I was thinking I was getting an entire pack of just these Springer thingers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she also pointed out that I need to try and correct my grip and she suggested, I love how these don't come with instructions and I actually need instructions. These are not the ones with the three finger hole things because um, a lot of those look like they're sized for children and I'm trying to, where I can, retrain. Yeah, it has to be the two pointer fingers. I'm trying to retrain my grip as much as I can. So I wanted to get a few of these to help. And then this, this, hmm, like this? Wait, I think, I don't know. Like, the, this is what would be most comfortable to me with the finger going in here. And then we have some that are like kind of a combo and they do make a bunch of different types of grips, like the soft, cushy, educational style grips like these that are bigger and they have some squish. The problem with these, these are really hard. If you like mechanical pencils, these are really hard to get onto mechanical pencils. If you paint with a brush, unless you're painting with a brush, how does this, it did, this one comes with instructions. It's really hard to get it on your brush. Like, oh, oh, okay. All right. So the R goes up here and then I don't like, I see the R and I don't understand. <laughs> Oh no, look, if I'm gonna have to like read a bunch of stuff, I'm not gonna do that. So, oh, so we place our thumb on the R. Okay, all right, that's, fingers will fall naturally into place with the middle finger on the underside. Yeah, all right, that's cool. I kind of get this. It's really nice and squishy, but as you guys can see, the opening is really pretty small. So like, good luck getting that on a stylus. And then these with the bumpy grips. So these are like tri-grips. And by try, I mean like triangular. And these are kind of like the Coombe and the Stod grips that I like. Um, I'm looking around to see if I have any of those handy. Of course I don't because I'm recording. Why would I, why would I make life easy on myself? Why? 
this is an old stod grip. I bought a bunch of these when I went to Japan the second time and they're kind of spiral shaped and they kind of guide where your fingers go. And they're also very squishy and I really like these. And even when they get nasty looking and dirty, I still keep them around because they're a lifesaver. They make things so much easier for myself. Now, I mentioned earlier about it being important to be able to get a Kush Comfort Grip on a mechanical pencil. This is a Muji mechanical pencil. It came with a really cheap, non-squishy grip. I was able to remove this and slip a much more comfortable grip on. This still isn't as comfy. <laughs> I'm gonna try it right now. Why not, right? Try not to break my lead and make a mess. Okay, it took a little doing um, and it's not, it's not super on there great. You have to like really push back the grip to, but, but I can do it. Hope I didn't, there we go. Okay, all right, and it kind of reminds me of orange soda and this is very much more cushy and it's much more like how I'm supposed to be gripping. So I like that. I may try to replace all of this one is a Dollar Tree grip, same thing, on a Pentel Icy. So the Pentel Icy comes with like a rubberized grip that used to be very comfortable, but I used this pencil so much that I wore down the grip entirely. And this one has been, uh, it's seen better days anyway. I mean, this pencil has seen better days anyway. <laughs> so do, what do I wanna, do I wanna do another one of these? Do I wanna do one of these? Do I want to do this little adorable mint green friend? Um, I'm kind of leaning towards, let's do the teal one on this. I use these two, two pencils all the time. So this is another problem with me and grips is I will not put them on my pencil, right? Because it has to go on just the right pencil and I don't want to have to take it off and put it on a bunch of times. So it ends up never getting used because it's special. So, oh, oh, that's kind of, <laughs> I like how I'm, in, I'm so easily impressed. This is much more squishy, much more comfy. So some of the advice I give is, and I can probably grab an example. You know, those cool looking metal mechanical pencils, the drafting pencils. I, that's how I wrecked, well, that's how I think I wrecked my hand. I mean, the Shogrins only came about a couple years ago, maybe this year-ish. I kind of think it's been with me since I moved back to Louisiana. Um, but the hand health problems predated it by decades. Because I have a bad grip, and I death grip my pencils, and I bear down too hard. And I've talked about this before. And for years, I used those metal drafting pencils because... They can stand up to that kind of wear and tear and they look really cool. And we didn't have the, the plethora of really nice Japanese mechanical pencils available over here, at least not in the plastic bodies. It was mostly like resin, which is much harder to break, but also harder on your hands and the metal ones. And you see, I was a girl who drew manga-esque comics. I'm a woman who draws manga-esque comics. And those metal drafting pencils made people take me just a little bit more seriously. I'm not even joking. It's all about looks for some people. So for years, I used those metal drafting pencils because it made me feel more like a real artist. Now I don't care. I will use the goofiest plastic mechanical pencil that is comfortable in my hand because it is better to break the pencil than it is to break my hand. But I didn't know better. And that's why I'm telling you guys now. I mean, those pencils are sexy. Not gonna lie. And a lot of the stationary blogs and the art blogs love those pencils. I've written positive reviews of them myself and they are built like tanks. They are workhorse pencils, but they really will wreck your hand. And while drawing with a wooden pencil is often the most ideal because it does have some flex and it has some expressiveness to it, not all of us are a good fit for wooden pencils and some of us are a better fit with mechanical pencils. So a plastic mechanical pencil that you can, I really like this grip, that you can put a nice, squishy, comfy grip on it. So that even if you're death gripping it, it's not gonna wreck your hand. Now my other problem is I wanna like crunch, crunch up instead of holding it back here. And another thing I've been trying to do is trying to do my sketching with holding these things really loose. Um, so I am trying to adjust 
how I do things, but I am kind of slow to that. Now, I do write by hand a lot too. So I'm probably going to put these and then I also have this, which looks like it might be really good. Oh, might be good for like a stylus or something because it really wants to guide your hand. But I'm kind of holding out with the stylus um, for maybe this grip. I also have a silicone sleeve for my stylus that, so the Sam, the, not the Samsung, the Microsoft styluses, and I'm looking around to see if I have it here at my table and I, I do actually, okay. This thing, all metal machined aluminum it is very slick in the hand you have your button controls here on the side and another one back here no clip to it this has no give it has no cushion and it's actually really hard to grip if you develop grip strength issues so as a device made for a wide array of people who may have different disabilities or might not but i do kind of think you live long enough you're gonna develop something this is this is not great like they could have talked to more people who have different health issues and gotten some feedback from them now these are some longer grips i don't know why they wrap these up like candies that's so wasteful they feel a little funny but they don't smell funny see what i mean like it can be really hard to get grips onto a stuff oh fact it's so difficult the battery wants to come out so a lot of these things are not made with disabled users in mind and a lot of us don't like to don't really yeah let's be real don't like to think of ourselves as being disabled or having disabilities and a lot of us actually are so i wanted to kind of oh shoot uh that came out way too easy um i wanted to kind of normalize Sorry, I want to make sure I put my battery back in correctly. I want to kind of normalize just talking about having disabilities, hand health issues. I'm not looking for pity, but I am looking to help other people who see themselves in what I'm talking about, who know what I'm talking about with the hand pain. I want to help you guys find stuff that are, that's going to be comfortable for you, allow you to draw, to sketch, to write. And we'll work with the materials you like to work with because like, let's be real, most of us cannot actually switch away from what we're working with. So I definitely want, this is the one I was kind of excited and scared for. So it's gonna really chunk up my brushes, but some of these brushes are way too thin to actually be comfortable for extended use. So, I'm kind of hoping to cut maybe a good size chunk. It's going to get wet and I don't love that idea. Tactile issues, but also it's going to cause the, the brush and the metal to degrade. Maybe something like this. Is this thick enough? Not really. But this is so much more comfortable for me. Maybe I can train myself into So another thing about this is I have ADHD. Y'all know I have ADHD. I don't hide it. Um, I have to work with what I know I will do. I have to stop doing aspirational like, oh, and I can just slide this back every time I watch it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But I have to think really realistically about what I'm actually going to do versus what I aspirationally think I'm going to do. I'm going to at least give this a try because it is, and if maybe I can learn to loosen up some. And it's going to take some practice and some getting used to. Now, something I don't love about this is how much this moves. So another thing, a lot of artists I know will bulk up their brushes, their inking brushes, their watercolor brushes. They will bulk up their pencils with like medical tape or that, um, it's like band-aids. It's that foam adhesive stuff that's on the foamy band-aids. They'll bulk it up with that. Like I have seen some real Frankensteins and though I love them. I was hoping for answers like that when I asked on threads. Wrong audience. Should have asked on Twitter three years ago before it went to where Twitter went. Um, but I don't know. I kind of like this. I kind of don't. I don't know if it's going to stay though. Um, the ADHD is ADHDing at peak ADHD right now. Sorry, y'all. Anyway, 
I don't want to use medical tape on these because it's going to soak up water. It's going to get gnarly. So I'm trying to come up with solutions. Maybe the grip tape. I'm trying to come up with solutions that I will. So this is grip tape. This is my first time using it. It is optimizing performance and maximizing safety. Sounds good to me. Antimicrobial, waterproof, non-abrasive, durable, anti-slip, and allergy-free. That sounds like it could be good for me. And I, like I mentioned, I am probably going to use these things regularly if they work for me. You will see them in other videos. I don't plan on doing like a huge, huge thing with this because the, the spoons and the forks are not there for that right this minute. But I, I do want to talk about it and I do want to normalize it and I do want it to be something. Okay, so this is taped. I don't like that. Um, I know why they did it and I, oh, I'm going to have to, do, I'm going to have to clip it or tape it or something. Okay. So it is an adhesive tape. It has a backing on it. I kind of like that because you see, I don't want a huge amount to wrap around my pencil. I just want enough that this will have something to grip onto. So what I can do is I can just cut a square and it has like a protective backing on it. So like theoretically. I could cut a bunch of squares and just have them ready if I wanted to apply it. I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna aspirationally do that, okay? I know myself and my own weaknesses. And then let's try this. Don't even really need all that much. Like I could I could bulk it up with this. It's not squishy, but it is more tactile. And it does make it larger. So this might actually be enough. I'm going to try it like this, I think. Might be enough to make it a little less uncomfortable. Now, this is going to be a better fit, I think. Because it's... <laughs> it's a little too hard to do and then a little too easy to do. And by the way, this is not medical advice at all. Um... Here, I really try not to give you guys medical advice. Tea time, it bothers me when ADHD channels where they're not a doctor, they haven't gone to school for it, they haven't studied it, give wide scale advice that could have a detrimental effect to somebody. Like it kind of, I, I would feel responsible doing that. So when I give advice, I usually center myself like this is what I do. This worked for me. And if it resonates with you, that could be something to think about. And you should talk to a doctor because I think I take that responsibility really seriously. So it bothers me to see some of the ones who don't couch it like that and are not doctors blow up and be so influential. I am not a doctor. I'm not an occupational therapist. I am not even fully repeating what my doctor said because that would be in a way stealing from her and her expertise. I am showing you some grips because I went and did some research and I am showing you guys some uses. If you think you have a hand health issue, I would recommend talking to your doctor about it. If you think you have an autoimmune issue, I would really recommend talking to your doctor about it. I don't make any money from telling you guys to go to the medical system. I just would be horrified if my bad advice did something bad to you. And uh, I can't not feel responsible for that. So it comes in three sizes. The blue, they show this usually with like forks and knives and stuff. I don't have the, my problems stem from like three, four hours of painting. My hand starts to lock up. So I don't think I need the blue yet. If I painted with really ginormous brushes, I might. But then again, I paint for such short periods of time with the ginormous brushes too, that it might not even be an issue. This one's gonna be maybe Trixie, because I kind of want to get it just a little bit over that plastic co cover on this quill. And I probably should just start with a few brushes and see if it drives me crazy before. And like, just kind of pick some brushes that are like, kind of indicative of the sizes that I use. Um, 
before I like go crazy and I put it on everything. I have a bad tendency to go overboard and then hate it a month later. Um, so I'm going to just do a few and kind of see how I feel. So if you guys see these Kush Grips show up more often, then you'll know I like them. And if you see them disappear, then you should know I didn't like them. And I, if I really, if I, if I, you know, I love those dollar store grips and no looking back, no regrets. And I think I'm gonna love these triangle grips a lot too. So I hope that I don't hate anything. I hope it's more like, okay, this didn't work. Let's put grip, grip tape on everything, you know? Like, I hope it's me fine tuning these things and not me getting discouraged and giving up. <laughs> Not giving up on art, giving up, like, I don't know about you guys, but I am very stubborn about some things and then not stubborn enough about others. So, um, I have a bad tendency of like doing something halfway and then giving up or getting discouraged, right? So, um, hopefully I will stick with these things long enough for them to change how I do things for the better. So I, while I like a lot of these, I don't necessarily... Yet, I only use, this is my graphite pencil, this is my red lead pencil. Um, I'm going to leave the, the stod grip I have on the FB for a while, partially because it's really, this is a harder to kind of get some of these tighter, more narrow grips on. So I like these, but um, it can be kind of a challenge. And then I really do want to give these a shot because I love how these spiral so they can fit different sizes but I don't yet know where I'm gonna use these, but I'm actually already excited about these. I just need to remember to like plop, <laughs> plop these things on the things that I use. Like for example, I sketch with color pencils, but I go, well, I bought a bunch in bulk and so I'll use them and then put them aside to sharpen them later and just grab another fresh one, especially if I'm like really in a flow state. <laughs> So I'm like, I think for this to work for me, I'm going to have to put grips on all of these. And the downside to that is these grips do what? What do they do? They grip. So like, it's kind of hard for me to get them on. And then it's going to be kind of hard. Well, let's see. Actually, can I push it up really easy? That's not too bad. And these come with instructions too. I hate how everything's packaged to death. Thank you for your purchase. Oh, it's just uh, them asking for a review. Don't, don't love that. See, with I think they want, I can never tell if they want the right side pointing to, or if they want the right side pointing toward you, the viewer. Actually, with the way the R is, it looks like it, it looks like this is right. So I'll try the, these little triangle grips on a few of these because I also will hold them from the side and this feels like it kind of will facilitate that. So I'm kind of, I hope you can kind of hear it in my voice. I'm kind of hopeful. I'm kind of excited. I was, have been in tremendous hand pain for the past couple years and um, seeing treatment for my Sjogren's syndrome while getting a diagnosis and then starting treatment has helped some, but then the weather got cold and it got really bad. So then I started pushing to go to occupational therapy so that I could learn some better life choices and maybe make some systemic choices in how I make art and how I use my materials so that I can change the underlying problems and um, just hopefully have a much longer drawing life. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that this can have a positive change that will, the grip tape is going to be iffy because it's, if I remove it, it's going to leave a sticky and I'm already like, oh, I kind of want to move it down some. And let's be real. I probably don't. I just want to bulk it up. You'll try it. We'll see. At least it's on a synthetic. It's not that expensive if I have to scrap it because it's just not working for me. So, um, that, oh. I, mm, I don't necessarily, I'm waiting for the sleeve for my stylus to come in and I was going to put this on it after because once I put the sleeve on it, it's going to make it non, not as magnetic. I assume not magnetic at all because it's going to cover the magnet and get in the way. 
Oh, bless you, Joseph. Okay, all right. Ooh, ooh, it left sticky on my hand. I hate that. So it, hmm. I like this part. This part will slip around your stylus. I don't know about this part because you know what I could do? I never listen to anything on that computer with headphones. I could get one of my old headphone plugs that I used to do for my charms and I could put this on that and see what it'll do is I can still use it without losing it, right? We're working with the ADHD. We're not fighting the ADHD. So hopefully you will see these around because if you see them around, it means I like them and I'm finding them helpful. If you enjoyed this and you want to follow up in six months of which ones are my favorite and which are the ones I think you shouldn't waste your money on, let me know. I bought a variety of them because honestly, sometimes you need different things for different purposes. So hopefully I will find uses for everything and love all of it and just have different specific use cases that you guys should try. But, um... I have a disability. I don't want to let it define me. And I don't want it to take away the thing that I love the most, other than my husband and my pets, making art and drawing and expressing myself through illustration and through comics. I have made comics since I was like 13 years old and I am, I'm not 13 anymore. I'm much older than that. And I've been drawing since way before then. Like, Art has been a constant source of expression for me and writing has been a constant source of expression for me. And I want to do what I can to keep it, but also to make good choices for myself in how to make this as sustainable for the long haul as I possibly can. I know people with disabilities talking about their disabilities make some people uncomfortable. This video ain't for you, honey. Like, I got what I got and I want to help people who have similar or just have hand problems and are looking for a little bit of relief. So if you are not struggling with grip issues, your hands are not tired all the time, you don't have arthritis, I still think squishy comfort grips and working with a plastic pencil will help prevent it from getting bad. But this is for my friends who your hands hurt after painting your hands ache after inking, you've developed a small tremor as you're painting or inking, you are struggling to make art like you used to. This is for us to be able to continue to do the thing that we love while protecting ourselves. So I hope that this was helpful. You clearly do not have to buy all of this. That is not at all what I was saying. Um, but of the things here on the table, I think these, the, the foam grippies, I'm either going to love these, have to adjust them because maybe it's too short to be comfortable with my hand. I don't know. Like I said, this is my first time really using these. And the one she gave me to try was like this big and it hit my hand all wrong. Um, I'm either going to love these or I'm going to hate these. They're bigger. I'm definitely going to have to like loosen up my grip, but that could be a really good thing for me. I think... I will probably, if I end up being good about using these, the little triangular ones, I'll probably like them. I already love these jelly, squishy, nubby, triangular ones. They fit on my mechanical pencils. I These are going to get a lot of use. The Stod Grip here, I love, love this. And I would have bought more of this and the Coom ones. Um, I don't have any of the Coom ones handy, but they're expensive and they're not, they're often not on Amazon. You often can't find them. So I wanted to buy a bunch of, so I could put it on everything I have. These are like my Dollar Tree ones. So they're going to get used, but I didn't open them because they're not a novelty. You guys have seen them here. These just have a diamond pattern on them. They're just made of like a squishy plastic. The trainers are going to be interesting. I feel like these would be good if I can get them on. Not this. I like this one a lot. Um, I'm not sure where this one's going to go, but I like, like how it fits in my hand. But it's so small, I don't know what I can use it on. The trainers, I think, are going to go on pens because I handwrite a lot of notes for the Easily Influenced series. So that's where I see these being the most helpful. 
And also this, you see how small that hole is? That's really hard to get onto. Maybe I should have put this on like a detailing brush. Maybe. But the, this kind of limits what I can put it on. But wait, I like how I confuse myself with how to hold this thing. There we go, like this, right? Okay, yeah, like this. Then why does it have all this squishy? I don't know. Anyway, um, so I definitely think these triangular, triangular squishy grips are great. And I hope the grip tape, I can see the grip tape being really useful. I'm not sure if this is the use for it, but um, it's supposed to be waterproof too. So it may be worth a shot and I'm certainly gonna keep it around maybe for things where I do need a little extra friction. Like, okay, if you had grip bars in your bathroom and your hand slips on them, a little bit of grip tape might be a really good solution to adding just a little extra friction on there. So anyway, we talked a lot about grips today. We talked a little about hand health today. I just wanna remind you guys, not a medical professional. I don't have medical training but I am a comic artist and illustrator who draws a lot. So hopefully um, this will provide some relief and hopefully it was helpful for you guys. And if there is a drawing and painting therapeutic aid that I should be aware of, and I haven't talked about it before, let me know down in the comments. I will at least go look at it and consider it. I'll definitely check it out. No guarantees on if I'll talk about it here. some demo of me inking with the Stod grip on my Sakura Pigma FB. You guys have actually seen me ink with this grip on my pen quite a bit. I'm sorry you can't see the grip itself, but it does kind of give you guys an idea of how I tend to hold my pens and pencils. And I am aware that this is an incorrect grip. I am aware that this should have been corrected when I was a child. It was not. Uh, and I am trying to work on it now, but let's be real. I'm 38. I've been drawing like this forever. It's going to take years for me to be able to correct my grip. So it's important for me to start making accommodations. Look what came in today. It is a silicone cover for a Surface Pro stylus. Supposedly. Sometimes these things, you only find out what they actually do after. It's looking correct. It does say surface pin on it. So what I was hoping this will do, it feels very, very slick though, but it's still less slick than this. I was hoping it would provide some grip and I was hoping it might provide a little bit of squish. So what I like already is it has, that's okay. Very easy to get on there. So it does actually kind of work with the clicker. Except I have to like really get in there now. It, we'll, we're going to try it out. We'll find out. I don't want to dismiss it. And then it has two different caps, pink or purple. I'm going to go with purple because it's cute. And let's see. Okay. And then it even has a hole where the light up thing, the little LED indicator would be. Now, I don't know if this is going to work super great because this covers, didn't want that to happen. This covers the eraser and you can see the little green light maybe, maybe not. I'm going to go ahead and do a little surgery on, on this. I'm going to cut this top off so that this button can actuate a little bit better because I can already tell that's going to be an issue. That was a super easy surgery. 
and hopefully this will help. Hopefully this will like ease up some of the problems. So the only way I'm going to really know if this works for me, it looks cuter. That was not my goal. My goal was comfort, but it is cuter now. If I was doing like an aesthetic laptop, this would make it more aesthetic. Okay, here is my surface. So one of the things I cared about was, is this still gonna magnet to the side? So it does actually still magnet pretty good to the side, so that's great. And I bought this lasso thing and I was going to attach it to my computer using the headphone jack through this loop just so that they don't get totally separated. Now this is silicone, so I sh may have to ask Joseph to get it on there for me, but it should stretch large enough. And I wanna put that, not as aesthetic, right? It, it's gonna be a struggle bus, but so far it will work. It does cover. If I were working where I was in a, a setting where a lot of people had these and we kept getting them mistaken for each other, you can buy like replacement styluses in different colors, sure, but this is like an inexpensive way to kind of mark yours as its own. So I think this will work. I, it definitely makes it a little larger. It adds a little tiny smidge and a squish, which is great because I do tend to death grip things and it still magnets. So Joseph had to slip this on for, slip more like fight it on for me. Uh, it's pretty tight. Hopefully I like this as a solution and I'm not immediately trying to remove it. So it has a stretchy silicone cord. And then I have here a little headphone plug. You know, back in the days when phones had those. No, oh, I have to do it the other way. Set this aside for later. And then I'm gonna try. If I had a sewing needle, oh, this is elastic. If I had a sewing needle or something, I could thread it through a little bit better. Got that. Then we <laughs> loop this. I will either love this or hate it. Oh, that did not work. There we go. All right. And then I have to figure out where the headphone jack is. So there we go. And that's just a little plastic bubbin. There we go. Okay. So this is definitely going to catch on everything in the entire world, probably. So I'm going to have to do some cord management, but it seems to work. Everybody's absolutely favorite thing. It's recording a screen. Everyone hates it, including me, but we, we all realize why we're doing this, right? And like, obviously this is, oh, that's, this is going to get in my neck. The silicone holder seems fine so far haven't like obviously fully used it this the leash is going to get on my nerves it's also going to take some getting used to because i can't see my stylus tip as much doesn't matter i'm just drawing over this as a test and this isn't even a very comfortable drawing setup for me i mean it is erasing Okay, so it is. I'm not gonna be able to use that second button though because I have to like really get in there with the tip of my finger. I don't know how much I use that anyway. And my computer is being really slow. So like, please do not take this lag as indicative of how the whole system works. So I like the little silicone sleeve so far. Uh, obviously I'm going to have to like actually use it there we go. It kind of shifted down. This thing here makes it want to shift downward. I don't know about that. I do like the silicone sleeve. I don't love the little leash. However, the reason I bought the leash is I thought it might impact the magnet ability and it doesn't seem to. And maybe it's a little less strong, but it's not like noticeably bad. I do wish this were easier to put on and off. I wish I could just clip and unclip it. I, I know that kind of defeats the purpose, but it does get in the way. It does tangle on itself. For travel, it will be pretty helpful, but for like just normal use, 
it does kind of get in the way. That said, I do see this leash being useful if you're going to and from school with your drawing laptop every day. Uh, I see it being helpful if you allow small children to doodle on your laptop and they tend to lose your stylus. It could be helpful if you have a cat who knocks your stylus onto the floor all the time. It could be useful if you take this into the field, any kind of tablet into the field and have people sign with it so they don't take it and they don't lose it. It's just, I'm gonna give it a try, but I don't like it. I do like the little silicone pin cover though. Hopefully that'll add just a little extra cushion so I'm not eating up my hand as much. Here's a demonstration of how those foamy grips worked for me, or more like didn't. They were too bulky for me to comfortably use and I found that they really got in the way. I also tried one of the wrap grips and while I liked it, it didn't stay in place as much as I would have liked. I ended up finding a better alternative that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. You guys can see how bulky the foam grips are in my hand and it made it really difficult to use my watercolor brushes with any kind of dexterity or nuance. These might be a great option for people who work larger than I do or who have lost much of their grip strength, but they're just not really a good fit for me and I ended up finding an alternative that I like a lot more. wasn't intending to do this, but these foam grips are obnoxious on my brushes. I do still kind of like these grips. I would like this, but it's not quite a snug enough fit. But like you have, if you're trying to put grips on brushes, you have to buy a bunch of different grips because some of them are way too small of a hole and way too sticky and you can't get them on your larger brushes. Somebody please seriously make and market adjustable resizable grips for brushes. I will happily use them, but these, they make me so clumsy. They're so hard to use. I, I tried to give them a fair chance. I really hate them. I dunk them in the water and I have to push them all the way back just to get them in the water because they're going to soak up the water. Like I am sure these are a great accessibility aid for other things. But for brushes, these are not going to work for me. Which is a shame because some of these larger ones that I use all the time to block stuff in, I can't find stuff to fit them. This is a demo of me using the grip tape. I had OT today and I asked them if they had any kind of expandable solutions for non-uniformly sized watercolor brushes because... You guys have seen my struggle, right? And they actually gave me a little bit of self-adhesive bandage wrap, the kind that sticks to itself. So it's not sticky to me, but it's going to stick to itself. And I think this or tennis wrap is really going to become, it's gonna get gross and I'm gonna have to take it off and replace it, but I think it's gonna be a good solution because it's cheap enough that I don't have to care about it. It comes in one inch, two inch and three inch sizes. It comes in bright colors if I, the black is fine, but like it's not just beige, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm thinking this, oh, and it's got a little bit of squish and I can build it up as much as I want to build it up instead of being kind of forced into a specific size. Here's a demo of me using the medical tape. I like it a lot. It does absorb some water and that's a little bit obnoxious, but it's so much easier on my hands. It's pretty affordable and it can fit 
basically any brush. So this is what I'm going to be using on my watercolor brushes until a better option presents itself. I did purchase some tennis racket grip tape that I may try later on in the future. And I'll let you guys know what I think about that when I use it. If you guys have any alternatives for brushes, like adding a grip to the brushes, let me know down in the comments below. I am open to hear what solutions you guys have found. So I think I figured something out. So I talked about how in OT they gave me some grips to try, like some, let me just show you, like this stuff, like the grip tape, okay? And I ordered some and I've been putting it on my brushes and it works really well for what I'm looking for. I can put it on a variety of brush sizes, including like the really small ones. It's not actually sticky to my hand, it just sticks to itself. So it's not like it's leaving like kind of a gross adhesive residue that's going to get on my nerves. And it has stuck pretty well and it doesn't even really shift on the brush itself. So I think for brushes, this might legitimately be the solution, especially for some of these smaller ones that really would be much more comfortable if I could bulk them up just a little bit. Now this is the cheap stuff. It's not as nice as the other one, but it's not bad either. And you can get these, I mean, you can buy it in person at like CVS, Walmart, places like that. You can also get it pretty cheaply online. Another plus to that is see how the quills have the metal wires in there. Sometimes if I was painting a lot and it got wet, it would start to kind of bite into my hand. I can actually cover it up just a little bit so that it's a more comfortable grip. And even though this tape does get wet, it doesn't lose it, its adhesion. It doesn't start to peel away from itself. And it dries out pretty quickly. So even if it gets wet, that's not really an issue. Just put it on a paper towel so it has a chance to dry. You can also, if you don't wrap it properly, you can rewrap it. Or if you found that you put too much, you can put a little bit more on. Or if you put too little, you know, like, I like that it is kind of a flexible option for something that had been so challenging to find solutions for. Now I'd asked at my favorite art supply store if, you know, they had some, not like this stuff, right? But I was hoping an artist had maybe invented an artist version of a grip for brushes. And that doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm sharing this with you guys because when I asked on threads, if anybody had grip solutions or, you know, what people's grip comfort grip solutions were, a lot of people were like, don't know, watching to see for answers. So hopefully this will help some people out. I wish I had known about this sooner because, I mean, obviously I've suffered a lot and been through a lot of hand pain over the years. And not, I mean, that's part of what drove me to watercolor in the first place is that you can have a lighter grip. You don't have to choke up on your brush as much as I was doing with pencils but even that did start to kind of become difficult for me so I think this is going to end up being the definitive solution for me regarding my brushes and I've just been as I've like needed brushes I've just started putting the tape on them as we go and we'll see how long the tape lasts but it's fairly inexpensive you can get big pack actually it's harder to get one roll at a decent price than it is to get a, a bunch of rolls. So I currently have more rolls than I probably need. So, you know, if this does wear out and I need to replace it, that shouldn't be too big of a problem. But I wanted to share this with you guys because it doesn't cost much. It's pretty, pretty mod modular, pretty easy to modify. And um, it just seems to kind of solve the problem. Even when I choke up, choke up, it's still some comfort to the back of my hand. And if I wanted to, I could have wrapped the whole thing to make it a little bit more cushy. That seems like overkill. In general with these, I am trying to put it far enough up that um, when I dip it, it's not gonna get wet, but that isn't always, you know, the best grip for this. So like I said, it will get wet, but it'll dry out without a problem. And that's not going to cause an issue with how it adheres to itself.
Here's a very quick doodle demo of the triangular pencil grip. It's large, so it does take some getting used to, but it is very squishy and cushy. So it's on a bunch of my pencils now, and it's very comfortable to use. Here's a demo on a bad Shogren's day of me using my stylus cover, the silicone stylus cover and leash on one of my small little Android tablet, the fun frenzy tablet that I talked about a while back. The leash is really annoying. It really gets in the way, but the stylus cover is great. So I've been using comfort grips for about a month now, and I wanted to kind of share what I've noticed about myself. So the grips that I use the most are that self adhesive bandage wraparound stuff like the medical tape that isn't sticky sticky. It's just got latex in it. I love that stuff. I put it on a bunch of my brushes and it makes it a lot more comfortable, especially those really small size brushes that you really need to build them up. So would recommend. The only problem is when I dip, given how I hold pencils and stuff, I like choke up on them. When I dip it, so that's where I need the tape, right? When I dip it in water, it does absorb some of the water. You can blot that out with a paper towel. That's the only problem. And I think that's more of a me problem than an it problem. So I do recommend utilizing that kind of medical tape. It's very inexpensive. It's very flexible. It can go on a variety of size pencils and utensils. I did not like the foam, the big chunker foam grips. That's a personal thing for me. It just got, is too bulky. The, the difference between the foam and my utensil was too great. It caused pain. Not for me. Didn't work for me, but it might work for you. Those squishy triangular grips really like those. Those are on my pencils. I also like the stod grips, the jelly, any of those jelly grips are usually pretty good for your mechanical pencils. Sometimes you can take them apart and remove, like some of them have like a little plastic fake grip that isn't even squishy and doesn't have any ergonomics to it. Um, you can replace that frequently with the jelly grip. You can also, if you have to use a drafting pencil for whatever reason, you can usually get a jelly grip on top of that as well. So I really like those and they're not super expensive. You can get the Dollar Tree ones. I've definitely done that. You can also get the triangular shaped ones. It's really kind of up to you. I bought a sleeve for my stylus. Now I know Apple folks for the Apple pencil, there is a myriad of grips and sleeves and other things. I am not an Apple person. Uh, I have a Surface Pro and a Surface Book. So it has a metal stylus. I found a sleeve for that on Amazon that actually leaves the clickety clickies open. I like that. Okay. It solves a lot of the pro. I wish it was more squishy. I wish it had more texture, but it's still a big improvement over that metal pencil-esque body. So those are the three grippy comfort things that I use the most. I am also in occupational therapy. I finished my first six weeks. I'm now on my second six weeks and I was the one who wanted an additional six weeks because I noticed that with my occupational therapy and I've heard some people dissatisfied with their occupational therapy. So that's why I'm gonna caveat, not everybody's the same. I really like mine. They work with me a lot. <laughs> they give me a lot of stretches and exercises to do. If you don't do them, you will lose what you gain. And I mean within like a week's time. Now I'm a routine kind of person. And when my routine is messed up, I forget to do my exercises or I'm not consistent about them. That is on me. That's not on them. But I can definitely notice a difference in grip strength from when I do my exercises regularly to when I'm not as good about doing them. Um, we are also going to start PT for my back because I, I have a hunched back from years of carrying really heavy books and then also like the artist shrimp punch right so we're going to work on that next and i'm hoping that's going to improve my arm strength and also help with my migraines but um i really like ot i am willing to drive 30 minutes out of my way each way to go to ot because there's none available in my local area and it was really important to me i had to make my case to my rheumatologist for me to take ot so if you think occupational therapy will help you, you need to make your case to your doctor. And what I did was I explained like, I'm an illustrator, I am losing grip strength, I am losing mobility, I am losing flexibility, and I'm only 38. I wanna have a career left ahead of me. And he kind of didn't get it, but he kind my husband also helped. Sometimes you gotta bring somebody else in to help advocate for you. 
Um, and he kind of relented. And I am really glad that I advocated for myself and I pushed for it. If he had said no, I would have gone to my, um, my general practitioner who I think listens to me a little bit better and I would have asked her for it instead. But he did actually write the orders for OT. Now OT is expensive if you don't have insurance. It can be expensive if you do have insurance. It's not something accessible to everyone, but if you're an artist and you want to continue drawing for the rest of your life or as long as possible, I do think if possible, it's worth looking into, worth seeing if they have a payment plan, worth seeing if you can get your insurance to cover it because the damage we do to our hands can drastically reduce our drawing career. So if you don't wanna to have to find something else to do with your life, I would recommend doing what you need to do to take care of your hands now. Now, um, I'm not gonna teach you guys any exercises because what I like about my OT is it is customized to my problems, to they had me do pinch tests and lift tests and grip tests. And like they really talked to me about what I was struggling with and what kind of differences I wanted to see. So I, in my opinion, good OT is gonna be very customized to you and your problems. So me teaching you the exercises they have me do, one, might not do anything for you. And two, it might exacerbate a problem rather than fixing a problem. So I don't intend to teach you guys any exercises. Um, but I will say that I think that OT was a good investment, especially for somebody like me with Sjogren's where it's not, it's not affecting my joints necessarily, it's affecting my tendons. So I do have swelling, inflammation, tightness. Um, I do have some arthritis and they've been working with me on that. And we've been doing like a lot of stretches and a lot of strengthening exercises. So them, I've, I've used comfort grips to a degree for years but it wasn't until OT where they're like, why are you doing things the hard way? Let's find some ways to make this easier for you. Why do you feel like you have to reinvent the wheel? Um, which I needed to hear. Uh, it wasn't until OT that I took it seriously. So I am trying to impress to you guys to take it seriously. Even if you don't have problems yet, making things more comfortable, more squishy. So it's not bone against metal. That is ideal. Now, a lot of artists, at least when I was coming up, talked about the artist callus. Like it was a great thing. The more calluses you had on your hands, the gnarlier your hands looked, the more divots you had. Oh, you're a real artist. And that's bull. Like, uh, please make things easy for you. Please hydrate. Please take breaks. Please stretch. Please try not to sit like a shrimp. Let's, let's try to like sit up. Let's not work in uncomfortable chairs if we can help it. Like the more you invest in making sure you're comfortable while you're drawing, painting, sculpting, the longer your ability to do these things will be. And honestly, the less you'll probably have to pay for health stuff later on down the line. So I hope me talking about comfort grips was helpful for you guys. I really advocate for them. Look, I will be real, uh, I am gonna link Amazon affiliate links for you guys, but like you don't have to buy them from Amazon affiliate links. You can buy them wherever. In fact, um, for some of the comfort grips going to educational stores down here, we have a store called the educator, uh, teacher resource stores, that sort of thing. Also, um, stores for children with disabilities, buy them from there. You don't have to buy them from my link, but I do see a little bounty if you do. But I'm a big advocate for this because I did a lot of damage to my hands and because I draw and write wrong. I have terrible hand posture and no one thought it was important to correct that when I was a kid. So if you can fix it early on, go for it. I, I remember a few years ago, um, the artist friend group I was in was real toxic. It was very workaholic. It was very like, if you're not always working, you're not even a real artist. And it was so bad that one of them had messed up his hand pretty bad, his dominant hand. So he was learning how to draw with the other hand. So he had a fallback hand, which is, I kind of like the idea of having a fallback hand just in case. But also it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> your idea of being a valid artist is grinding yourself into a pulp that's scary so i'm uh trying to advocate like if you want to if you want to i forgot the term ambidextrous if you want to train yourself to be ambidextrous
go for it. There's nothing wrong with that if you think it's cool, if you want to be able to draw with either hand, like that's kind of a cool thing. But like, please let it not be because you wrecked your dominant hand through overwork. And rather than changing your behaviors, you're just going to wreck the next hand, right? Like we only got two. So anyway, I hope this was helpful for you guys. All of the grips and other things were things that I bought out of my own pocket or were recommended to me in OT. So I've got skin in the game. You guys will see me using them throughout other videos and I'm just not gonna make a deal about it because accessibility is important and everyone deserves a shot, right? That's what equity is about, right? Like, or a, that we can all, all get the needs, the accommodations we need to have a shot at things, right? So I hope this was helpful. If you know somebody who, who has, has some bad drawing habits, somebody who's wrecking their hands and wrecking their hand health, please feel free to send this video to them. Hopefully it will be helpful. And like I said, feel free to buy your accessibility aids from whatever source you like. The links are just for your convenience, but do not feel obligated to use them. Also, if there's something really cool that I missed out on or didn't know about, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Just because I talked about a few things does not mean I know everything. In fact, I sometimes know shockingly little. So if you have experience with mobility aids, accessibility aids, drawing aids, and you want to share them in the comments, please do. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope to see you guys again soon. And I sincerely, from the very bottom of my heart, hope that this will help you guys have a long and happy art, not career necessarily. If you want a career, that's cool. But like just a life with art, right? Making art a habit. Bye guys.